Welcome back to the Two-Way Report. All anti-gun liberal progressive politicians force us to live by their unfair anti-two-way laws, but they don't live by these laws. Well, in this video, we'll talk about the exception. One of those anti-two-way politicians is given a taste of his own medicine. His Second Amendment rights are taken away from him unfairly. Now this is what I call poetic justice. So, I've got quite a story to share with you all today about a person who championed gun control in the state of California, only to have it turned back on himself. The individual in question is San Diego County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, who not only held a supervisory position, but was also running for a state senate seat, which tells you a lot about his political ambitions. After finding himself in trouble, this Republican traitor turned Democrat who had previously advocated for gun control measures like red flags in California is now facing the consequences of his transgressions and his anti-gun advocacy. The San Diego County gun owners took notice and filed a GBRO against him, while also requesting that the sheriff revoke his CCW. This guy believes that others should be red flagged if they have issues, and he now finds himself being red flagged. Let's discuss the details of the situation as it's important to understand. Now, for the benefit of viewers who don't live in California and haven't heard of a GVRO, it stands for Gun Violence Restraining Order. It's a legal order served by the sheriff or marshal, basically prohibiting an individual from owning, possessing, or buying a gun, ammo, or magazines. It'll also require an individual to surrender their guns, ammo, and magazines to the police, or if they don't want to surrender those, they'll have to sell them to a licensed gun dealer. So, a GVRO is kind of like a restraining order, except it cannot order an individual to stay away from their family members or to stop abusing or harassing them, nor can it force them to move out of their home. It basically says, hey, you can't have guns and ammo. But going back, the GVRO was again filed by the San Diego County Gunners, a pro-Second Amendment membership group that has made significant strides in promoting gun rights in both San Diego and the entire state of California. Despite their contributions, they have not received enough recognition for their efforts. They collaborate with the FBC and other organizations to preserve Second Amendment rights, particularly in San Diego County. Overall, they are a commendable group, dedicated to upholding the rights of gun owners. The first thing I want to address is why the San Diego County gunners, who have always been strongly opposed to GVROs, would file one against someone. Based on interviews, articles, and my own analysis, I believe they did so because in San Diego County alone, there have been over a thousand GVROs issued. However, it seems that those with power or influence are not held to the same standard as the general public who must abide by these rules. Thus, the San Diego County Gunners filed a GVRO against this individual to hold him accountable and show that everyone, regardless of status, should be subject to the same laws. Their message was essentially that living in California means being subject to its laws. If they are required to follow certain laws, then those who make the laws should also be held to the same standards. This includes experiencing what it's like to have their Second Amendment rights revoked without having been convicted of a crime. Prior to the San Diego County Gunners filing the GVRO, there was a lawsuit filed against Nathan Fletcher, which includes accusations of sexual harassment, sexual assault and battery, and other illegal behavior with people who used to work for the city. The case is called Figueroa v. Fletcher. I'm no lawyer, so I won't get into it. Suffice it to say, it's the type that makes your skin crawl. I'll share a link to it in the description as well if you'd like to read through it. Now, in California, a person's Second Amendment rights can be taken away without being convicted of any crime or breaking any law. All it takes is for others to deem that person a threat to themselves or others, and a GVRO can be filed and served. Prior to the sexual harassment case and the GVRO filed against Fletcher, he had public comments regarding his mental fitness and mental capacity that could potentially be used to file a GVRO against him. These public comments can be used as the basis for a GVRO. Again, a person can have their Second Amendment rights revoked without being charged or convicted of a crime. Simply making certain comments in public or online can be grounds for a GVRO, even if those comments do not suggest any criminal behavior. And guess what happened? The San Diego County Gun Owners Association used those public comments and the sexual harassment slash sexual assault and battery lawsuit against Nathan Fletcher, holding him to the same standards as everyone else in the communist state of California. Although I do not endorse GVROs and neither do they, I have to say, it feels satisfying to witness someone who heavily advocated for these stupid anti-two-way laws and imposed them on the entire state of California being subjected to the same standards they enforce on others. It is likely that they would have been content to have the entire nation bound to these laws as well. 
I was able to read the letter written by the San Diego County Gunners addressed to the District Attorney, County Sheriff, City Attorney, and the Police Chief. It is dated April 4th of 2023. I'm not going to read through it because that would be boring, but I'll let you know the gist of it. I'll leave the link in the description if you guys want to check it out. So, it's about how the San Diego County Gunners disagrees with many current laws concerning firearms and continues to work to get them overturned. They also believe that special treatment of elected officials should never be tolerated. Then, they went on to say that a lawsuit was filed against Fletcher, which includes serious accusations of sexual assault and battery, sexual harassment, and other illegal behavior. It is common practice for those California citizens accused of such illegal activities to have their concealed carry permit revoked and a gun violence restraining order filed against them to remove their access to all their guns. This GVRO filing against Fletcher is also further strengthened by the guy's statement that he released not too long ago, stating that he is too mentally unstable to continue his campaign for state senate and that he is seeking treatment for addiction. So, they requested in the letter to follow up on the progress made to revoke Fletcher's CCW and serve him the GVRO that was filed against him. Fletcher has been a vocal supporter of GVROs that heavily restrict CCW holders, particularly when accused of violent crimes. The letter was sent by Michael A. Schwartz, San Diego County Gun Owners Political Action Committee. There are a couple of key takeaways here. This situation highlights a fundamental issue with the way laws are enforced and applied in society. If certain individuals, especially those in positions of power, are not held to the same standard as everyone else, it creates a two-tiered system that undermines the principles of fairness and justice. The fact that a GVRO can be filed based on mere accusations and without any conviction or even charge of a crime is deeply concerning. It sets a dangerous precedent that could be easily abused and violates the fundamental rights of individuals to due process and presumption of innocence. It is important to hold those positions of power accountable and to ensure that laws are applied fairly and consistently across the board. Only by doing so can we build a society that truly values justice and equality. Upon doing all the required research to complete the write-up for this video, Fletcher's story, an anti-gun politician in California facing the repercussions of the laws he advocates for, I experienced a certain level of gratification, though I also have to say I'm a little half-hearted. I know that this reaction may be rooted in my initial response to the news, and I am open to hearing what you guys think about the GVRO, because again, we, gun advocates, hate this kind of stuff. And even though it feels good to give these politicians a taste of their own medicine, there's just that part of you that says you shouldn't feel good about it. Yes, it's supposed to be a good thing that someone who has been pushing for strict gun control laws is now being held accountable to the same standards that they expect others to follow. It can be frustrating to see elected officials and those in positions of power seemingly exempt from the laws they pass, while ordinary citizens are subject to them. It's why these types of news are refreshing. But you people may have valid arguments against the filing of a GBRO, regardless of who it was filed against, friend or enemy, and if any of you would care to opine, please feel free to comment on the matter. It's important we all consider the issue and weigh the pros and cons before we reach a conclusion. Ultimately, discussing and analyzing cases like these is essential in improving America's legal system and holding these pesky politicians accountable. I encourage open and honest discourse on this topic and expect various opinions on this. And that's all for today. If you like more of these videos, please support us by clicking on the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and tap that notification bell too while you're at it, just so you're always updated on our future videos. Thanks and have a good one.